Message to all Labour Party supporters. Kiwis have suffered enough, and enough is enough, but coming soon on General Election Day is another type of suffering. Most people know who they're going to vote for, but there's a real pain dilemma for traditional Labour Party voters, whose party was practically destroyed by Mr Dern's far-left destructive divisive ideology. Sadly, this current shipwreck of a government stayed in power when the tyrant dictator, the Queen of Disinformation, decided to resign. Warning, beware the new wolf in sheep's clothing, who also hides destructive and divisive intent under the guise of caring and kindliness. Beware the viper. Chris Hipkins publicly stated that the New Zealand Queen of Disinformation was not only a very good personal friend of his, that she was also one of New Zealand's great Prime Ministers who provided inspirational leadership. Hipkins may have the calming appearance of a young, smiling and caring schoolboy Prime Minister, but behind his charade lies a political viper, a wolf in sheep's clothing. He and several other losers in the failing government helped the previous New Zealand tyrant dictator destroy the traditional Labour Party values. Hipkins' background. Not the greatest of qualities for any Prime Minister to be proud of, I suggest. I won't bore you with all of the details, but still dangerous waters run deep. From a young socialist activist, he did some time in jail, then on to politics and eventually the Minister of Police. He breached the Privacy Act, he vilified innocent women, he made false statements to the public, and he promotes a very soft on crime approach. Probably worst of all, he thinks the previous tyrant dictator of New Zealand was a great, inspirational Prime Minister and leader. Chris Hipkins does not support or promote traditional Labour Party values. Instead, he totally believes in the lunatic, far-left, destructive and divisive ideology of his best political friend, the New Zealand Queen of Disinformation. Had he better values, or had he believed in genuinely trying to help Kiwis, he would have plucked up courage ages ago, perhaps at least two years ago, to roll the tyrant dictator with a vote of no confidence. But he did no such thing. In fact, he seemed to revel in schoolboy delight and rub everyone's face in it when he publicly and proudly announced that the previous PM was a great friend and inspirational leader. Unbelievable backstabbing hypocrisy. Behind your back. Apart from midnight sorties to force through racist entrenchment policies and clandestine tax grabs on your Kiwi saver, Mr. Hipkins is well known in the failing government as Mr. Fixit. Probably very suitable for the Labour Party, but more suitable in the global arena for the Mafia. Is Mr Fixit really the best that this utterly failing New Zealand Labour Party government has to offer? He was always second in command, taking the fall when required to implement the tyrant dictator's divisive agenda. The openly gay Deputy Prime Minister was already deep in the poo for other reasons, and so he wasn't suitable to take the blame. Lest we forget, not so long ago, Chris Hipkins, Mr Fixit, lied to the New Zealand public resulting in a lockdown of Northland due to fake Covid cases for political matters. Three innocent women were openly vilified by Hipkins and the general public as a result of Mr Fixit's blatantly false statements. Several days later, he calmly stated with his grinning schoolboy smile that he lied to save lives and he would do it again. Guess what's missing? Mr Fixit forgot to say how many lives would have been saved and more importantly, who these fictitious lives were and how they were actually going to be saved. Same old, Chris Hipkins just loves the New Zealand Queen of Disinformation, but now he's skipper on the same shipwreck with the same crew. Mr Fixit is nothing more than the same old, same old. Watch now what happens over the next few weeks and months. Coming soon. Higher food prices, higher fuel costs, higher rents, higher mortgages, higher interest rates, more and more misery for Kiwis, and plenty more state-sponsored racism. If you are a traditional Labour Party supporter and you'd like to restore historical Labour Party values, then the best thing that you can do for yourself, for your family and your friends is to vote for another party at the general election. The best thing that you can do for all Kiwis is send a message to the world and get rid of this far-left, woke, divisive, loopy government and get them well below the 5% MMP threshold. Thank you for listening. Wongari Tim.